Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the Breitling Emergency 2. Launched in 2013, it is the latest and most sophisticated version of the Rescue Beacon watch that Breitling first launched as the Emergency in 1995. This watch is a class of one. There's nothing else like it, at least within the realm of watches. And it is a monster. At 51 millimeters in diameter, it dwarfs any wrist. But here's the deal. If you ever have to ditch from your airplane, if you get shipwrecked or you fall overboard, if you break your leg on a mountain someplace and you need to save your life, no one's going to give you a hard time about wearing a 51 millimeter watch on a baby wrist. That said, it is 51 millimeters in diameter, and at 21.8 millimeters thick, it's one of the thickest watches I've ever tested. It's a massive 65.4 millimeters from lug to lug, and 26 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and here's the deal. If you're sailing offshore, if you're hiking Everest or K2, if you're out in a rainforest, if you're in any place where you might find yourself incapacitated, lost, or isolated in a life-threatening situation, look, no one's going to laugh about the way this fits. This is professional gear, period. And the fines for using it capriciously, that is anything but an emergency, are draconian. They are crushing. You don't want to know. Google is your friend. You can find out that way. But you can see the watch will sit on my wrist. That's said, my 16 centimeter circumference wrist is dwarfed by this thing. And if you want to wear it proportionally, you're going to need a wrist of at least 20 centimeters circumference. That's how big you need your wrist to be for this thing to look like anything but a giant in comparison. The strap is massive, and as you can see, it's thick cut, so it'll last a long time. Now, it does actually close the gap to the flank of the case, so it has a pleasing integrated look to it. You can see that the relieved letters invert and become embossed, so it's almost like sort of a Hershey bar pattern right there. And then we have Breitling's most deluxe clasp, which is a thick gauge, single fold titanium with the wings external, twin trigger release, and then there's a push button slider internally, so you can make small incremental adjustments to the sizing. It's also a pre-scored strap that's designed to be cut to size, and we will cut this brand new strap to size your wrist. So don't worry, there's quite a bit of adjustability engineered here, including on the fly. Look at the profile of the case. You can tell that this is a charging dock, and this watch can be charged. In general, if you think you may need the beacon, you charge it every two months. The battery has a service life of three to four years, but that battery is for the movement, the quartz watch. The transponder should be charged up every two months. The antenna for the transponder, it's underneath this cap, you unscrew, you pull it out, and when it goes active, it broadcasts on both the traditional emergency frequency of 121.5 megahertz and also the newer one of 406. Both are still monitored, even though the older one is no longer the primary. The watch does have a unique feature that was not previously present on the emergency, which is the ability to contact the uh, COSPAS SARSAT satellite network. So this is basically a search and rescue and emergency network of satellites. And whereas the previous beacons had fairly limited range and duration, the advantage here is that it's got the power to pipe the signal up to a satellite. And as soon as you hit one satellite, you hit them all because they mutually reinforce and communicate. So the beacon goes up, it hits a satellite, that satellite calls all the other satellites, and presumably someone comes and picks you up on Gilligan's Island, and the series never happens. But such is modern technology. Now, if they could have made this out of a coconut, they would have gotten off that island a lot sooner. The watch, of course, is fundamentally a lot like the Aerospace Evo. There's a couple of features it doesn't have, like the backlight and the minute repeater function. You can see I push the crown, it doesn't chime the time. But it does have abundant conventional luminova, and you will find absolutely no trouble getting your bearings using the analog time display. Now, it also has a digital time display, that you can activate by turning the crown. There we go, that's the time, analog and digital. You can make that go away if you want. You can activate the alarm. It's a time of day alarm. You can also see there's a chronograph that you can activate. And it is a very 
high resolution chronograph down to one one hundredth of a second. We have a second time zone. We have a countdown timer, so you can set a certain amount of time, like five minutes, 10 minutes, five hours, and at the conclusion of that time, the alarm will sound. So it has a time of day alarm, but then it also has a programmable countdown timer, and it has a perpetual calendar, electronic, of course. It also has multilingual calendar capabilities, should you desire that. So all that is built in. The movement, Breitling, provides is caliber 76. You can see on the back, E means it's a titanium Breitling watch. 76 means caliber 76 is used, which is based on the ETA Thermaline series. Three means it's a certified quartz chronometer, but you can see on the reverse side, a whole lot of information about the watch. First, it will not float. Second, it has an operating temperature range. Third, charge every two months. Fourth, the beacon will run for about 18 hours when fully charged. Fifth, it's 50 meters water resistant, so surface exposure only. And then it is manufactured in Switzerland, and it is a quartz chronometer. And quartz chronometers are incredibly rare. Uh, this thermocompensated quartz chronometer is accurate to 10 seconds a year, thus exceptional. Remember, very few quartz chronometers are certified. This is elite status. Uh, the movement, of course, has an end-of-life indicator. It has a subtle way of letting you know its battery is approaching the end. And then there is a compass rose bezel that is bi-directional, and you can use this for navigation. If you can see the sun, you can actually use the bezel and the hour hand to determine which way is north, and thus, accordingly, you can also determine which way is south, which way is east, and which way is west. That is what all of that is for. It is a spectacular machine with unbelievable capabilities, and one of the most unique watches ever made. It is also a formidable conversation piece. So if you do want to wear it stylishly, you can explain to your friends what it does. It has a lot of techno cool to it. We do have these wonderful color options, including Volcano Black, Intrepid Orange, and this is Cobra Yellow. You can see there's actually a fair amount of depth to the dial, and you have those applied tri-Arabic numerals in high polish that look pretty darn cool. So much to love about this watch, and it might just be the watch that loves you back, as if you are ever shipwrecked, you ditch your aircraft, or you might be tempted to cut one of your limbs off with a pocket knife while trapped in the woods or on a mountain, Brightling Emergency to the rescue. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.